All right, thanks everybody for joining us for this talk titled From Emulation to Detection. So what, what we'll be talking about here today is adversary emulation and you know what we do in elastic security to actually detect those behaviors and some of the things that we're thinking about this within this uh, field. I'm Paul Ewing, I'm here with James Viteri and we're both on the product team within elastic security. And attacker emulation is something close to our hearts. I mean, we're obviously using this as a, as a means to validate our own detections, but also, as you can imagine, it's pretty important for us to validate our own tools and our own workflows. So this is something we use quite a bit to look at our own product and think about our own way that we respond and triage alerts. But moving ahead, let's start with the classic agenda slide, just so everybody know what they're, uh, <laughs> what they're, what they're gonna be seeing here. We're gonna talk about adversary emulation, uh, what it is, some quick background, talk about some of the tools that are available today, specifically those red team tools, those offensive tools that you can use to um, emulate. Then we'll talk a little bit about the detections. Um, real briefly, what you should think about when setting up your environment, but really the core of this is how we use elastic security to detect these behaviors. So firstly, adversary emulation, you know, this is something that's growing in popularity as you can see with the screenshots here on the slide even um third parties out there are validating vendors we've worked with miter or more specifically miter ingenuity if uh, folks have seen that before where they're actually using their attack matrix which is a knowledge base of malicious techniques to assess vendors and kind of assess their own detections and see how how um accurately they detect malicious behaviors um so you're seeing more of this we We've taken part in all of those evaluations to date, um, but more generically, when you're thinking about emulation in general, this is really uh, purple teaming. And purple teaming is something that's been talked about now for a while within the InfoSec community, but at the basis of it, it's this marrying of red and blue teams that traditionally have kind of been siloed. You know, red teams have worked in a vacuum and they'll test vulnerabilities, find, find um, weaknesses within the organization. And then the blue team is there not only detecting active threats, looking in the, for the red team as part of, uh, in a, as another threat within their environment. And so purple teaming was this way for those two teams to start coordinating and actually have a sh shared goals and uh, a shared vision of how can we actually detect and then also extend that to threat hunting. Uh, now at the core of this, it's really about evaluating your protections. You wanna emulate the techniques that are important to you. And maybe that leads to better tools, uh, creating new rules, um, or even analytics in a very generic sense. Uh, but also, I think a lot of times we forget about how we should be evaluating our own team's procedures. Um, so James and I talk about this quite a bit, uh, where, you know, it's one thing to have an alert generated, um, but how do you respond to that alert? What are your ways to track those incidents, respond to it, et cetera? So these are the things we're constantly thinking about within Elastic Security. And of course, as we're talking about this, I always like to make a note that please use the chat here. James and I are here to answer questions, so please don't shy from asking us along the way during this presentation. Um, so tool, tools that are available, here's just a quick snapshot of some um, attack emulation suites, if you will, that are out there. I mean, we've talked about MITRE already, uh, but MITRE Caldera is a, um, a utility that you can emulate some MITRE-based techniques via that um, attack matrix that we'll talk about even a little more in a bit. Uh, Atomic Red Team from uh, Red Canary, again, another established way to emulate uh, specific techniques from MITRE and almost have like unit testing on your detections. Uh, we, we've done blogs with uh, Prelude Operator that James will talk about here in a little bit, but also even at Elastic internally, we've released uh, Dorothy, RTA. I mean, we've tried to provide some tools to the community to say, you know, Dorothy is specifically there to emulate cloud-based um, threats and, and look at your rule posture um, from that perspective. Um, and RTA, very similar to some of the other capabilities here. But at the end of the day, you know, there's a lot of options out there. It's really about choosing a framework, if you will, and, and really establishing a plan. You know, we've already, you know, when you're doing a security talk, you know, at some point, the attack matrix is going to be shown, right? So this is our quintessential MITRE attack slide. Um, but, but that being said, MITRE attack is a great tool, you know, a a, a, a knowledge base, if you will, that summarizes all of these malicious techniques and maps them to threat groups, et cetera. Um, but the thing to keep in mind is that this is just one framework. When you're developing your plan for an emulation, you should be thinking about, am I testing my visibility? Uh, do I have a data source gap within my environment? You know, If I'm detonating um, techniques relating to 
PowerShell or, or, or basically, let's just say endpoint based host level um, behaviors, but I only have firewall and network logs, you're going to be limited. Um, so think about that in your plan. Sometimes you're developing a plan that is actually trying to highlight gaps in your coverage within your organization. I mean, obviously emulating threat groups, extremely populated, populated, excuse me, but grab the techniques corresponding to a single group and then emulate those techniques. And you know, the good thing about this is you should find the threat groups that are um, targeting your business vertical or things like that. And you can use that as a way to prioritize um, your own emulation. Um, but of course, emulating the techniques specifically, that's, that's, of course, you can always do that kind of to the screenshot that I'm showing here, just a, a long list of different malicious behaviors that even MITRE outlines. Uh, but again, think about it. Like, are you trying to emulate a behavior because you think that technique is less monitored? Um, do you think you don't have an abundance of rules for that behavior? Is, is it a, naturally a higher priority for you to care about spear phishing or command and control? You know, these are all the questions you should be asking yourself. And don't waste your time and just emulate hunt at the same time. You should be doing threat hunting. Um, that's the beauty of this. If you're working with the red team and they're detonating a technique that you want to discover from a blue perspective, at that same time, you should be hunting for that. Who knows what you may find when you're, when you're going through this emulation process. And, and just to dive in a little more to MITRE ATT&CK um, in, the, in the matrix itself specifically, I zoomed in on one technique here, just grab PowerShell, of course, really popular, at least from like a living off the land technique, but, but just look at what's available just in, in this information, right? So firstly, data sources on the right of the screen, you could say, well, hey, I wanna detect malicious PowerShell, but am I getting process events, uh, script block logging? I mean, even MITRE talks about how attackers will you know, in, inject into an existing process kind of live within memory, but then they'll load the DLLs and modules that they want to to, um, to execute PowerShell. So what's your module uh, loading look like? How are you tracking DLLs that are imported? You know, all these questions you could dissect as you're building up just one plan for PowerShell. And, and of course, you can see the pivots here where you could grab techniques based off threat group at the bottom of the page, or even in the middle of the description, MITRE will provide the available uh, red team tools to, to actually emulate and be and actually conduct this uh, emulation yourself. So extremely useful, um, but one, one of many. Um, and, and the other thing to keep in mind here is that, so once you have this plan about why, you know, really think about the technology. Uh, and so we've talked about data sources already and visibility kind of gaps, but your ability to alert and hunt, we've talked about threat hunting, but really you think about it when an alert is generated, you're triaging that, determining if it's a true or false positive, um, and then usually in that investigation, you're starting to do threat hunting um, in, in inadvertently. You're asking questions about the alert, you're getting more data. Um, and so really you should be asking yourself of your tools and technology, how easy is this for me to do in, um, in, in my suite of tools that I have here? And, and James will show more of this in a bit, um, but it's really important. And finding the unknown, I mean, maybe that's, I don't know if I'm playing a little like buzzword bingo here, but the reality here is that uh, you do need to think about it's one thing to have rules, alerts, um, triage, and threat hunting, but having alerts generated is really important. Having alerts generated off behaviors, core behaviors, not signatures, is extremely important. And so we just highlighted here, like even thinking about machine learning, maybe it's important that you detonate a behavior that you know does not have a detection, but you still think an alert should be generated from you name it, unsupervised learning within your environment, maybe a vendor tool that you're using, maybe you're using Elastic, hopefully, in our machine learning, and you're getting an, an anomaly detection, right? These are all components of how you should assess your technology. Okay, uh, I mean, last thing you want to ha have me do is talk more and more. I want to leave plenty of time here for James, but just to set James up here a little bit, um, it's, it's kind of a three-step, uh, three, three step, I should say, kind of four in this with an asterisk, but Step zero of when you're setting up your emulation, it's a little out of scope right now. Uh, <laughs> we didn't wanna take too much time on setting up an environment, but goes without saying, you should make sure you have your red team tools, your blue team tools, um, using your vendor, you're collecting data, you're indexing it, maybe you're importing writing rules, et cetera. You need to set up this environment. But at the end of the day, the core part of this is your emulation. And today we'll grab some MITRE attack techniques amongst some other techniques to just kind of show that. Um, so make sure you emulate, 
Then as you think about your detection and response, it's not just about alerts, but how are you um, tracking this? How are you creating incidents and investigating that workflow? And then goes without saying the assessment of it. Um, so if, if you just stop at emulation and you stop it, wow, this is great. I got a, a hundred alerts. You're, you're not, you know, you're not doing the best job if you're not actually using data to drive your own team's um, behaviors and the, the detections that you need, right? Look for gaps, write new rules, et cetera. Um, so with that being said, James, I'll, I'll toss it to you here. Um, but again, I'll be in chat for any questions during the demo as well. Fantastic. Thanks, Paul. Hi, everyone. So Paul gave you a breakdown of you know, running a whole emulation exercise, right? So end-to-end -end steps, some tools, some techniques. Um, I'm going to run you through that exercise, right? So literally, we're going to go step by step as much as we can uh, in the time we have. Uh, and we're going to go through uh, how to do this primarily with, of course, uh, Elastic Security as the blue teaming side. Uh, and uh, I'm going to show you the red teaming side from uh, using uh, Prelude's operator. That's become uh, my tool of choice recently. But we're also going to combine um, some uh, tactics, techniques, and procedures from uh, Atomic Red as well, because that's one of the features of uh, operator, which is really nice. So the first thing to do is let's build uh, our adversary. Actually, the, before that, you need to have some of your target machines. So just make sure whatever tool you're using, uh, if it requires an agent or if it's agentless, whatever whatever the tool uses, you set up that environment first. And then it's time to start building your adversary. Now, when building your adversary, it means you're going to launch certain uh, techniques in a particular order, which emulate specific behaviors, uh, certain threat groups, threat actors. Uh, whatever you want. Um, as Paul said, it's also important to do this based on your infrastructure, what your network looks like, uh, whatever is important to you. Don't, don't just randomly assign tactics just for the sake of it. Run things which are relevant. So if, you, you know, if you're going to run this on a Windows machine, don't pick Linux TTPs. It doesn't make sense. Uh, the other way around, right? So just make sure whatever adversary you build makes sense to your target environment. Uh, so I have here an adversary which I've built. It has 34 TTPs. Uh, for those of you unfamiliar, this is what um, operator looks like. Um, and what's nice is per TTP, you can see what's going to be run. Uh, so obviously, you need to know as a red team what uh, the actual uh, command is going to be. And you can see here everything is listed out. Um, depending on the tool you use, you get more information than others. And so whatever tool you use, pick it that's right for you, that uh, even in terms of reporting, some of these tools have really good reporting, some of them are bit less. So uh, pick whatever uh, you prefer. Uh, in this case, you can see we've loaded up um, quite a few TTPs from Atomic Red, um, some memory dumping with, with LSAS and Living of the Land and some other things like that. And uh, there's quite a few different ones here. Uh, whenever you pick and you're ready, your adversary is ready, go ahead and you deploy it on your host or group of hosts even. So in this case, I have a singular host here. Uh, this just happens to be a Windows Server 2019 machine, very standard, nothing too, too special. Uh, it is, of course, running Elastic Agent with the endpoint security integration, and also collecting certain PowerShell events from a, from a blue teaming site. Um, that's where the concept of the purple team comes in, by the way. So this is not going to be an isolated exercise just for the red team. They're both working together. It's very involved, and that's the whole point of this. So it's not, hey, I'm a red teamer. I'm going to destroy your infrastructure. I'm going to exfiltrate everything. That's not the case. So uh, what we're doing here is we're working hand in hand to make sure, listen, if we're going to run this, let's make sure we're, the, we're either picking up the right data set and we're also running the right detections. So that's what, that's what we'll see from the blue side. But there's going to be a full end-to-end -end collaboration. So I've built my adversary. I've already deployed this just in the sake of time. So uh, what I'll do is I'll show you the results of that. And so if I click on my host here, uh, typically, depending on the tool you use, it will give you the, the status uh, of that uh, TTP that you've deployed. So for example, here I have a dumped SPC host to gather uh, remote desktop credentials. Uh, I can see, for example, this is what's run. From, from, so from a red team perspective, I know that this was run. So the red team is living in this tool. Um, let's see what the blue team uh, or the, the blue members of the purple team uh, have managed to report back. And if not, we'll work together to make sure that there's, there's either coverage or perhaps if I've ran something which didn't work, why is that? So I would be able to see, oh, listen, we need this tool in it, um, installed on the target host. So for example, a lot of these TTPs require tools from sysinternals and others. Um, let's make sure that that content is there. So that's the, that's the first part. We ran this, we've emulated the adversary. Now let's look at the, the other side of the house. Let's look at the actual detection, hunting, reporting, 
uh, and also end-to-end -end sort of uh, investigative experience. So the first thing to do, since we're running Elastic Security here, um, we are going to use some of the detections that's provided, right? So we as Elastic, our research team does write detection rules. Also our community as well. So these are um, written in the open. Uh, Paul shared the screenshot earlier of our GitHub repository. So these are all out in the open for anyone to see and contribute. Uh, and you can see here, I've enabled some of these um, before running that emulation. So I, I just want to see, so imagine in a case where, okay, let's see our coverage you know, default with what Elastic gives. And then if there are any gaps, we can add our own detection rules or supplement or, or um, change any that exist that might not be doing the job uh, as they fit in our infrastructure. So that's the first thing, making sure that you at least have some detection running if it fits within your scope. Because some people might say, listen, we, detections aren't in our scope. We just want to see what our team is able to hunt for. That is also okay. With that being said, I'm just going to hit our alerts. So within Elastic Security, this is the result uh, from the alerts tab. Uh, after I ran that uh, emulation. So we can see all of these alerts actually are a result of that. Uh, you might be saying, how do I know? Obviously, at this point in time, I know I'm running the exercise, so this is what I'm receiving. But you, since you're collaborating, there are some, tip, you know, there are some ways you can tell as well. So depending on the rule, um, if we look at some of the details, you'll be able to see, for example, uh, where this emulation was run out of. Um, if there's a specific process name or executable, there are certain tips and um, there are certain bits of data which might lead you to say, okay, this is part of the emulation exercise. Or you might be fully transparent and say, expect all activity to happen out of this directory, for example. That's totally acceptable. You can be a bit more covert and say, listen, just, just go ahead and hunt for it. We're not going to tell you as part of the exercise because maybe this is a gap we have in our coverage. We want our team to, be able to, to just find this without the, the red side of the house telling us where this activity is coming out of. In this case, uh, we can see actually uh, one of the fields that we have is the working directory where this is coming out of, and you'll be able to see that this is actually coming from operator. So in my case, that's typically how I know where this is coming from. So first thing, we're going to start going through a few of these, and do they match to the TTPs that were actually deployed? Because one thing we might be seeing is, hey, we have some additional rules here that spawned uh, as a result of that, which aren't necessarily uh, what the red team was hoping for. Um, so we might have even more coverage than we hoped. So this is a good example of, you know, we have one connection to commonly abused web services, which is generally looking for, you know, um, uh, you know, malware downloading files from places like GitHub and some others. So you can see, for example, raw GitHub user content, at Dropbox, so like publicly, uh, you know, public file sharing services and stuff like that. In this case, some of our TTPs actually were hosted uh, on GitHub. So I'll just make this full screen here. Uh, and you'll be able to see that uh, what was ran from a command line was actually um, a process to download the file from GitHub first. So this was like an inadvertent detection. This isn't what we were actually uh, hoping to detect, but we spotted it as, like a, as a, side, a side result, which is pretty cool anyway, because it still led us to finding uh, our um, adversary here. So. This is something you'd want to take note of because as part of your emulation exercise, you're going to keep track of, oh, we managed to spot this behavior because of this, so on and so forth. Um, so there's way more things you can look at, of course. So uh, we're not going to go through each and every rule. But uh, if I just go back to our alerts list here, there's a couple of things I want to show you. Uh, within Elastic Security, we have the concept of a graphical analysis view. So you can see sort of how things spawned off of each other. And again, this is pretty much what we expected to see. PowerShell spawning out of operator. And we can see all the arguments. So this is saying, OK, we've collected the right events. But we only so far looked at alerts. What about the raw data? Was there any data that came in that we didn't alert on? That's also important to know. So what I'm going to do is we're going to use our timeline here. And first, I have a simple query that's basically just looking at all the data coming out of the working directory of my emulation tool. And I can see I had quite a few events. I had 132 events. Um, the ones in yellow were detections. Anything that's not in yellow wasn't a detection. So this is telling me, hey, you had some other bits of data which we didn't detect for. And that's going to say, OK, should we have detections for these? Should we not? Uh, were there any missing? Should we have um, uh, more correlations happening here? What's going on? So that's another thing to take note of. Um, but in this case, you're also checking that you have the actual right telemetry data sources for your exercises. 
Uh, Paul mentioned using your tool to your advantage. So one of our features that we have as part of our timeline is the ability to correlate between data sources using our event query language. And here we can see what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to correlate with the raw telemetry and the reporting results out of operator because uh, operator does give me a JSON file of everything I ran. And I'm just going to use the process ID to do a correlation there to see, hey, did I detect everything that was ran as part of my emulation plan? Uh, and you can see here we have a few results which indicate that yes. Uh, but this would also give you a good idea if there's anything missing. The last thing we should highlight is all this stuff is running. How do we keep track of it? So within Elastic Security, we have this concept of a case. So being able to um, open up a case is going to allow you, you to track all your activity. So for example, um, we notice these alerts. Let's create a new case to say, hey, this is part of our emulation. Um, so I'm just going to say emulation. Um, just going to do Elastic on here. Give a description. We noticed this alert emulation. Just a really quick description here. But this is going to let me keep track uh, of the exercise as it's running. Because obviously, these are all combined at once. But as you're running the emulation, they start coming in slowly, slowly. Um, the last thing I would say is uh, of, um, Elastic as a stack is great at analytics and reporting. So one thing we can do is use something like Lens to create charts and visuals. So here I have, for example, I created a chart with Lens earlier of the process names that were generated from operator. And we can also include these in a case. So you can see, again, I'm looking for that working directory. And these are all the processes that were run as part of that emulation exercise. So it's good to keep track of this. I'm going to add it to our case. You can see here in the preview, it adds that chart really nicely. And this lets me know, like, OK, we had these alerts. We had this data. Here's a chart of the process names. Just keeps everything nice and neat. So those are just some examples of how we can use Elastic Security. And unfortunately, that's all the time I have for this demo. So I'm just going to hand back over to Paul to wrap up. Awesome. Thanks, James. Uh, yeah, let me uh, share my, get back to the slides here real quick. So yeah, thanks for, uh, I mean, you know, give us the feedback if you'd like to see this. Uh, we'll see James and I follow up on this and go even a, a lot longer on this. But hopefully <laughs> you got the uh, kind of focus here was like, when we look at this from a holistic view, you know, emulation is here to validate your detections, validate your team's procedures, et cetera, um, and coordinate, but also testing your tools, testing the frameworks, threat hunting, and then hopefully, of course, just from what James has shown you already, you can see, you know, of course, we may be biased, but the power of elastic security here, and especially making those data-driven decisions, how we used equal, and um, even in those uh, lens dashboards to help give a um, a data-driven summary of how well did we perform. So thank you, James, for doing all that. Um, I know that's how I know we're coming right up on the end here as far as time. I at least want to leave you with at least a uh, call to action, if you will. You know, please go check this out. You know, it's it's easy to go try the SIM or the security solution um, today easily. Um, and, or, of course, reach out to us in our community Slack, et cetera, if we didn't get to your question today or you think of a question later. Um, please reach out to us within Elastic Community. We're more than happy to help you, James and I. Um, but again, thank you for attending. Uh, thank you, James, and thank you all.